sine of 105 degrees. Um, now, looking into cosine of 105 degrees, guys. Um, basically, we're just looking at our cosine formula, right? You guys can, or, or I'm going to ask you to find the half angle formula. So, basically, what that means is the cosine of theta divided by 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine of theta divided by 2. Now, it's very careful. It's very important for us to understand. We're not doing plus or minus. So therefore, if you provide plus or minus, then I can probably assume that you were looking at your phone while I was teaching and you weren't listening because you will be the student that will put plus or minus on the board. Since this is the only time I'm referring to, you are not actually going to write plus or minus. The plus or minus deter is determined, or the plus or minus is used um, when looking at our half angle and which quadrant it is referring to. So notice that for sine and cosine, we have a plus or minus in front. But we're not going to use plus or minus. So don't write this. What we're going to do, the plus or minus determines the quadrant that our half angle is in. Now, cosine of pi or of theta over 2 is our pi over 5, 105. So is it OK for us now to say that for our equation, we're going to let theta divided by 2 equals 105 degrees. Is everybody OK with that, if we're going to use this formula? All right, what quadrant is 105 degrees in? Second. So therefore, is cosine negative in the second quadrant? Yes. So we're going to use the negative square root. Okay. So you don't use plus or minus, plus and minus, like you're just using either the positive or the negative. In this case, our half angle is in the second quadrant. So anytime our half angle is in the second quadrant or in the third quadrant, we're going to use a negative. Anytime our half angle is in the third or the fourth, we'll use a negative for sine. All right. Now the formula says asks us for theta. But we have theta divided by 2 is 105. So that means theta has to be 210. Okay, so guys, all we're simply going to do now is just plug it in. All right, and then we haven't really dealt with degrees as much, so let's go and practice. Just cosine 210 degrees has a, that's going to be in the third quadrant. That's 30 degrees over 180 degrees, right? So therefore, the cosine, so it's the reference angle is 30 degrees. So cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. But since it's in the third quadrant, it's going to be a? No, no, no. That's, yeah, yes, that angle is 4 pi over 3. But what's the cosine of that? We don't need to convert it to radians. What's that ang what is the cosine of 4 pi over 3? What's the cosine of 210? Negative square root of 3 over 2. OK, so now under the radical, we have a complex fraction. We have fractions within fractions, right? So what have we been practicing with fractions with fractions? Get rid of it. So to do that, you're going to multiply by 2 over 2. This is still under the radical. So we have negative square root. Don't forget to apply distributive property. 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 4. So I'm going to write a deep square root here. Now, here we have that. Based on last class period, our review of rules of radicals, is it OK to rewrite this like this? Can you break up the square roots across division? Yeah. Yes, right? So that's fine. You could also write it like this. Or you might also see it as a multiple choice answer written like this. Instead of dividing by 2, you're multiplying by 1 half, right? You're just bringing it out in front. Okay? 